morning, Williamsburg. This is your local anchor team. I'm Katie Crawford. And I'm Andre Zagorlko. Eating late at night, lack of exercise during the day, fast food delivery to the dorms, and excessive uh, amount of alcohol consumption are all decisions uh, which lead college students to gaining weight. And yet, while sex, alcohol, and high grade point averages are all nuances that are heavily addressed during orientation in almost all the US colleges, one problem lurks behind, and that is obesity. According to, to the US Surgeon General and Michelle Obama's Let's Move a campaign, one in three children today are overweight, making US the largest of all developed countries. In addition to that, obesity rates within children have tripled in the last half a decade. Unsurprisingly, university admissions do not eliminate these trends. According to the American College Health Association, 29.2% or almost one third of all American students are either overweight or obese. Behaviorally, 9 out of 10 students eat fewer than 5 servings of fruits and vegetables per day. Nearly 6 out of 10 students participate fewer than 3 times per week in intense physical activity. The American Journal of Health Behavior has found out that obesity rates have significantly increased during the duration of the studies. In order to better understand the attitude towards priorities that students at the College of William and Mary have, we sent in our own field reporter, Jim Duolod, to see where on the scale of importance do students see completing homework on time, friends and social life, taking time to eat, sports, and other sorts of recreation. And this okay, so is what first, he found out. I guess I'm going to prioritize homework, then food, then social, and then sports and other activities. I would prioritize homework, social, food, and then sports. All right, um, I think number one would be completing homework, then friends and social time, taking time to eat, and then like sports and other recreational activities. Interesting, isn't it? Yet, the problems don't seem to end just with prioritization. Other college demons include stress, alcohol, easy access to fast food, and late nights. This is what we had to hear from a fellow student. Yeah, so when I came to the college, I noticed that because of the work and pressure placed on the students, many of them ate often unhealthily. They ordered out a lot. They stayed up a lot, often way late into the night, probably 3 o'clock in the morning, which is unhealthy. They drank a lot, which is more often than not the case. And they binge ate a lot. Colleges and universities across America have the opportunity to take a stance against obesity. Examples of implemented programs include instituting an across-the-curriculum course on healthy weight with information on nutrition, physical activity, energy balance, and self-management skills, hosting a semi-annual speaking engagement with a prominent health or medical expert, reviving or expanding physical education and fitness classes in order to expose even more students to a variety of enjoyable and potentially lifelong activities, developing and promoting walking, uh, walking and cycling routes on campus, and finally, renegotiating contracts with food vendors for a healthier fare. Wow, Andre, it sounds like obesity is a really serious problem on campus. And all of these proposed university changes sound great. But what can students do now to stay healthy? We go to our correspondent, Taylor Jasper, in the field for more information. Thank you. My name is Taylor Jasper, and I'm here at the Commons Fresh Food Company to share with you all a few helpful tips about how to stay healthy in college. Portion control is very important when trying to maintain or lose weight. Big portion sizes can mean that your body is taking in more food than it can handle in order to maintain a healthy weight. But you don't need to carry around measuring cups to keep track of appropriate serving sizes. Just use common visual cues to remind yourself. For example, one cup, cup of cooked vegetables is roughly the size of a baseball, and three ounces of cooked lean meat is about the size of a smartphone. Drink lots of water. 
In order for your body to burn calories, you need to have an adequate amount of fluids. Additionally, if you drink a glass of water with a meal, it can help the food in your stomach expand and you'll feel fuller faster. Most medical professionals suggest drinking eight eight ounce glasses of water a day. That way your body is fully hydrated. Carrying a water bottle can help you keep track of how much water you're drinking. If you carry a 32 ounce water bottle, after you've refilled it and drank it two times, then you'll know you've gotten your day's amount of water. Eat a good breakfast. Breakfast is the most important meal of the day because it jumpstarts your metabolism. When you first wake up, your body needs fuel in order to get itself going. If you skip breakfast, by lunch you'll start to feel fatigue. Cognitive studies have shown that students who are hungry lose the ability to problem solve and think critically. Without eating breakfast, you're more vulnerable to cravings throughout the day and less likely to make healthy choices when it comes to eating. Take advantage of the campus recreation facilities. The rec is open seven days a week and offers a variety of programs and fitness classes, including massage therapy and personal training. The rec has two cardio areas, weight machines and a free weight room, a 25 yard eight lane pool, a climbing wall and racquetball and squash courts. To discover what the rec can offer, come see it for yourself. And to close, make sure you get eight hours of sleep a night. As William & Mary students are preparing for finals, a lot of us aren't getting enough sleep because we're pulling all-nighters or studying really late into the night. The American Academy of Sleep Medicine shows that when students stay up late, they're less likely to perform well in class. They suggest both studying and getting the adequate amount of sleep a night. Students who stay up late on weeknights and make up for it by sleeping in on the weekend are less likely to perform in the classroom. This is because on the weekends, they are waking up at a time that is later than their internal body clock is used to. The best way to counter this problem is to wake up and go to sleep at the same time every day. And back to you in the studio. Thank you, Taylor. In early February, William & Mary students were thrilled to learn that the current dining service provider Aramark would be replaced with Sodexo Incorporated in June of 2014. With promises of real Coca-Cola, Muya, and in the words of Anna B. Martin, a number of new and exciting changes, underclassmen rejoiced and graduating seniors sighed longingly. This past week, Anna B. Martin sparked another buzz of excitement with promises of on-campus restaurants, a taco truck, and an Aromas Cafe in the library, among other new dining options. Other new food offerings include new vegetarian and vegan options, special dietary options, international food, local seafood, house-made sweets, breads and spreads, Argo tea, Jamba juice, and barbecue. Although the general student body is very happy about these changes, one important question has not been openly addressed, and that is, what changes have been made to prevent or to combat obesity on campus? Dining services already provide nutritional information in the dining halls and via the app Campus Dish on your smartphone. The dining halls also provide healthy options such as raw vegetables, fruits, grilled chicken breast, fat-free salad dressing, and more. But what changes will be made once we switch to Sodexo? We contacted Cindy Glavis, the Director of Auxiliary Services at William & Mary, to answer this question. Cindy wrote to us via email and addressed two ways to prevent and combat obesity on campus. First, she addressed the Mindful program. She wrote, There will be healthy options meeting Sodexo's stringent evidence-based nutrition criteria, which earn Mindful certification. Mindful is about healthy indulgence, filling your plate with delicious food that will satisfy your appetite and hunger in conjunction with the new executive chef and dietitian, students will not only learn to embrace a healthy lifestyle during their college years, but learn shopping, meal planning, and cooking tips to allow you to maintain your healthy habits throughout your life. Cindy also mentioned a new online program that allows students to track their meals. 
She wrote, for students working towards maintaining a healthy weight, the online menu and nutrition calculator will allow you to pre-plan all meals in your day by running a selected item report and making sure you are hitting your protein and calorie goals. Sodexo also has over 4,000 campus recipes in the MyFitnessPal database. Scan the point of sale barcodes to add mindful items, or the occasional french fry, onto your daily food diary. Then log activity to work toward balancing your calories. For students that don't want to pre-plan or log intake, the mindful icon will highlight especially healthy items in the dining room. The on-site dietitian will also work with students to introduce new and healthy foods and help with meal planning, dorm room cooking, and any special needs. So there you have it. Not only will Sodexo be introducing new delicious foods to campus, but also new healthy foods. It appears we have a lot to look forward to next year. Thank you for tuning in. We'll be right back after a quick word from our sponsors. Hi, I'm Taylor Jasper, and I'm here to tell you a little bit about Zip Cars. What are Zip Cars, you ask? They're a better way to navigate your city. In just four easy steps, you too can enjoy Zip Car freedom. The first step is join. In order to apply, just go online, type in your information, and once you get approved, you'll receive your Zip Card. With your Zip Card, you can have access to thousands of vehicles all over the world. Second, reserve your card. You can do it online or conveniently on your smartphone. You can reserve a zip card for a couple of hours or an entire day. Third, go unlock your car. All you have to do is take your zip card, hold it up to the window. Now the car is unlocked and ready for you to use. Now you're all set. After your time is done, just return your zip car to the parking space where you found it. Join zip car today. Are you a William & Mary student? Are you struggling in any of your classes? Or, if you're doing well in a class, would you simply like to get ahead before the final? If you answered yes to any of these questions, Tribe Tutor Zone is the place for you. Tribe Tutor Zone is the college's official peer tutoring system and has provided over 2,000 appointments since it opened in 2011. Tutors teach a variety of subjects, including, but not limited to, foreign languages, sciences, economics, government, history, kinesiology, math, and physics. Within all subjects, tutors teach a variety of levels, from the beginner 100 material to more advanced 400 level coursework. For only $10, you can sign up for a 55-minute tutoring appointment today. Simply go to the William & Mary website, navigate to the search bar, search Tutor, click on the first item, and select Book Now, Real Time. From there, you can select the subject, level, tutor, and time that you want. Once you have entered all your details, a $10 charge will appear on your student account and you'll receive an email confirming the appointment. Here are just a few testimonials from our satisfied customers. My tutor was great. He knew the material very well. He helped me understand the concepts I could not understand in class. Worth the time and money. My tutor was really patient and helpful. I'd highly recommend her to anyone looking to improve their conversational Spanish. I'm not a math person, and calculus has been really tough for me, but my tutor was really helpful and helped me to gain more confidence before my test. So what are you waiting for? Go online today and book your appointment with a qualified tutor. Thanks for joining us. This is William & Mary Morning News. Now let's go to Andre to see what our forecast looks like for today. Thank you, Katie. Thank you very much. And good news to you all. We are finally waking up to warm temperatures. After a few days, almost a week, of waking up to temperatures around the high 30s, wind, rain, 
cold, uh, just simply cold, bitter temperatures and very cloudy and gray, we are now expecting the weather to increase and the summer to finally begin. Indeed, indeed, as it looks like we are going to be spoiled for the rest of the week. Today's temperatures are going to reach uh, some 70 degrees in Fahrenheit with very little uh, chance of rain and relatively high levels of humidity. Meaning that although it's going to be very warm, it's not going to be as pleasant as you might expect. Moving to tomorrow, Tuesday, uh, we expect temperatures to increase even further and reach the heights of 78, 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, as we can see on our, on our forecast model, we are going to have some clouds, but we are also gonna, uh, going to have some sun, uh, with levels of humidity increasing even further to 75%. As we move towards midweek, Wednesday, we, f uh, we predict that temperatures will fall down to around 70 degrees, but with this fall in temperatures, we're also going to see a decrease in cloud mass, meaning that students and professors and everyone else at the College of William and Mary will be able to experience an extremely sunny, a sunny day with blue skies all around us. Similar, uh, similar uh, forecasts uh, are predicted by our model for Thursday, where we're going to see temperatures around 71 degrees Fahrenheit and levels of humidity at around 54% which is definitely an improvement uh, on Tuesday where we, as we stated before, predict levels of humidity to be around 75. And finally, as we move towards the weekend, temperatures are supposed to increase. We are expecting uh, temperatures to be at around 80 degrees Fahrenheit with increased levels of humidity. Uh, it will be partly cloudy, however, we are uh, expecting, uh, expecting it to be sunny for most parts of the day. So besides getting your swim trunks and flip-flops ready, please don't forget to have some, sun, uh, some sunscreen because you don't want any sunburn, for, uh, uh, you don't want to experience any sunburn over the weekend. Um, so as we can conclude here, uh, it's going to be very warm in the next coming days and I'll bet you a million dollars that it won't rain in the upcoming future. Back to you, Katie. Looks like a nice morning. Thanks, Andre. Now joining us is our correspondent, Taylor Jasper, to talk a little bit more about sports. Hi, my name is Taylor Jasper and I'm here with your sports news for this week. April is Sexual Assault Awareness Month and the William & Mary women's lacrosse team is doing their part by holding their first annual Sexual Assault Awareness Game. Here's Katie Crawford with Kelly Gorman, one of the event's organizers. Hi, I'm Katie Crawford, and I'm here with Kelly Gorman at the Tribe Lacrosse Sexual Assault Awareness Game. Hi, Kelly. Hey. So, can you tell me a little bit more about uh, what's happening here tonight? Yeah, tonight the Tribe Varsity Women's Lacrosse team is having a game that's being played for sexual assault awareness. So, players on both teams are wearing purple and teal, which are sexual assault awareness colors. And uh, we've, we've gotten a lot of fans to buy shirts that say, I stand with survivors like the one that Katie and I are both wearing right now um, as, a, as a way for our community to show our support. Okay, great, thanks. And can you tell us a little bit more about how you see this um, affecting the William & Mary community in the long run? Um, it's, I mean, it's my hope that it'll affect the community in the long run, but um, I think that it's a great way for us to unite and come together as one and show our support for each other and uh, just be there for one another. Really live up to the one tribe, one family. And there you have it. One tribe, one family. Thank you, Kelly. Thank you. And on this wall behind me is a pledge that people can sign to show their support for survivors of sexual assault. Okay, I'm here with Jordan Taffet, who's going to tell us a little bit more about this pledge. Jordan, can you tell us a little bit more about this pledge? Certainly. So um, Kelly and Trish Gorman have organized this beautiful event surrounding this lacrosse game to stand as survivors of sexual assault. And this is one of the many ways in which we can stand as survivors. This is a pledge to simply stand with them, any survivors that may be in our lives. And so we've been asking people to sign that. And as you can see, we have a million different signs in there. So. This news agency stands with survivors. We sure do, Katie. Unfortunately, Women's lacrosse fell 10 to 5 in last night's game. The women held an early 3 to 1 lead over Hofstra, but were scoreless for the next 38 minutes as Hofstra scored eight unanswered goals to secure the win. The women will conclude their conference play on Sunday when they host Drexel University. From all of us here at William and Mary Morning News, 
Thanks again. I'm Taylor Jasper, and have a great day.